Welcome to the Grim Leftovers Show with Grimnir every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on reallibertymedia.com and rlmradio.xyz. Ah, uh, yeah, folks, it's time for another episode of Grim Leftovers. Episode 8, I do believe. Anyway, uh, welcome everybody to the show right here on reallibertymedia.com and glad to have you here with us for another episode. <laughs> I'm just uh, laughing at, the, at some of the bot responses going on over here in the chat. It shows uh, what's coming on, or what's on right now. Anyway, so uh, yeah, we're live. It's Monday night, February 11th, 2019, and we're live on reallibertymedia.com on RLM Radio Freedoms as well and many other places we're on spreaker too we got a live spreaker stream going on right uh, connected up and going fine how the hell y'all doing out there yeah <laughs> now uh but before i before i get into the show uh let me just mention once again we are still in the uh donation month of 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 real com. so if you uh feel the need feel the urge feel the desire, if you like what's going on here at Real Liberty Media, then uh, feel free to go, go on over to reallibertymedia.com and press that donate button. Thank you, Rob Works, for the sound check. Um, we, 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 we definitely appreciate any kind of funds you can uh, direct our direction. Um, that being said, I got a note here in the email just, oh, not that long ago, uh, a few minutes back. From Mr. Vin E. Now, now we we've had some. We we had a, we had a, a problem with with a particular chatter here, and we have a chat room here on IRC IRC.freenode.net, and it's uh, pound pound or real liberty media, and in there we have people chatting all the time, day and night. Not doesn't matter if there's a show on or not. People come in and they chat and they conversate, and different people have different opinions on different things. And, and certain people respond in one way and uh, other people respond in uh, maybe a less pleasant way. A- a- anyway, so over over the past while, a couple, two, three years, uh, a particular chatter we've had that uh, I, I, I actually get, get along quite well with, but others do not. Uh, anyway, uh, this one was, was um, causing some consternation amongst some of the, the chatters there in the chat. And uh, after, uh, you know, several uh, warnings and or uh, prompting to, to be a, a little kinder or uh, less uh, combative, I suppose would be the proper word on that, um, it, 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 it didn't happen. I, I mean, there was a while there and, and, and the person uh, was, was less combative over a time. Uh, but, but then, you know, people, you, you, can't, you can't help doing certain things if people get into certain moods or whatever. Uh, so anyway, th- this person was banned from the channel uh, to prevent uh, those conflicts from going on that were unnecessary and, and unwarranted. Um, and due to that, due to that happening, and I'm, and I'm really sorry about that because, you know, like I said, I, I did get along with that person and, and enjoyed speaking with them. Uh, but uh, I, I am but one of very many there, and, and uh, I would prefer to have a, a nice, not nice, but uh, civil conversations going on uh, there in the chat rather than, rather than just ad hominem attacks against uh, people. So that being the case, uh, one of the channel operators, other than myself, uh, went ahead and, and, and did the did the ban on this person. I I I I have appointed these people that are the channel operators as the operator because it's a, a channel I registered and and it's uh, my my kind of deal there. Um. So because of that that ban, another one of the the people here, well, one of the people that uh, has been a great contributor and an asset. Uh, towards Real Liberty Media over the, the last several years, uh, Mr. Vincent Easley um, decided he didn't like that at all. That this person was banned and, and decided to uh, he decided he he's not going to deal with it. If we're going to uh, ban somebody, then then he wasn't going to like it. 
and the thing is about this is really, I mean, on IRC and most channels you go into, they've got huge ban lists, people they ban left and right and all over the place. But but in this channel, we're more and more along the lines of uh, an anarcho-capitalist type of setup, voluntarist, if you will. Uh, and so he felt that a ban was going against the entire voluntarist mindset. However, it's not true. It's That's not the case. Uh, uh, whether you're a volu voluntarist, anarcho-capitalist, probably even those some of those other dirty anarchos, like uh, anarcho-communist or anarcho-socialist <laughs> that, I, that I disagree with and would not get along with, um, uh, they too will... will will protect their their property even though uh, yeah I don't even want to get into the whole anarcho communist socialist thing because well they say they don't believe in property but they do <laughs> anyway um, <laughs> be that be that as it may um, Vinny that's 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 how we refer to him Vinny here in the chat rather than Vincent easily but uh, uh, he's he's not happy with it and he, he doesn't think that we, we should uh, be kicking people out or banning people. Um, and he sent me a message to ask me to explain why the censorship of competing voices is allowed. It's not censorship of competing voices. We never Nobody ever tried to, to say you couldn't say certain X, Y, or Z. But when it comes down to ad, ha, ad, hom, ad hominem, <laughs> personal attacks, that, that's a whole different situation. That 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 is um, the initiation of violence. Uh, even though it's only text, it's only it's only on what, what you see on the screen. There's no punching or hitting or stealing or anything along those lines. It is what it is, and and, and it still is an initiation of violence, which goes against the non-aggression principle. Uh, so I, I, you know, it's, it's not, we're not trying to censor her words, uh, but, 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 uh, again, um, oh, I, I said her, see, I was trying to keep it, uh, neutral there, but all right, well, whatever. Um, so, and Vinny says, or asks me also why the ignore button is not adequate. Well, and for some of us, for many of us, uh, the, the operators of the channel, we, we can't we can't put people on ignore and ignore them because we need to see what they're saying in order to moderate the channel because uh, the operators of the channel are the moderators of the channel and the channel does require moderation uh, on rare occasions generally it goes along fine for months at a time nobody moderate nobody everything's going great <laughs> so So we're we're not we're not trying to censor anybody, and we love competing voices, uh, but we we don't want we we don't want violence of even in a textual manner. Uh, so that's why. And and, and I, I don't know what else to tell you, Vinny, on that. Uh, if you feel you need to step away from Real Liberty Media, I'm sorry to hear it. I I really am because uh, I I enjoy having you around here. I enjoy the content you produce. I enjoy the promotions you do for for the various shows here um and 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 i i don't really have another answer for you uh vinnie's in the chat saying now um be sure to include that she is our only libtard but she's not the only libtard Rome's is a huge libtard um anti uh although I, i'm not sure if he's got upset by this too and left but um we we have we have other libtards and we and we have people on the other side the the uh, the the right status tards whatever you want to call them conservative tards I don't know to I, I don't have a name for them but we have those too and you know we put up with <laughs> we put up with we a, a accept and uh, are glad to receive their input as as well as uh, you know because you know to me Vincent. It matters not if somebody's on the right side of the political aisle or the left side of the political aisle or the centrist side of the political aisle because it's all the political aisle and it's all fake. It doesn't matter. It's nonsense. But that's not what you're talking about here. 
and I wish I had a better answer for you. I, I, I do, I do, but um, I, don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't have another answer. That, that's as far as I can take it. Um, when, 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 oh my, when, when one of the uh, channel operators makes a decision to do something, I'm not going to step on their toes and prevent them from doing it. Uh, I, I mean, if something is really out of line, then, then I'll, maybe I'll talk to them about it or whatever. But, but in this case, it wasn't. It, it was warranted over, over a long history. It wasn't about whatever happened on that particular morning. So I, I am sorry um, that, that you are upset over this and, and feel that there's hypocrisy involved. But there's not. There, there really isn't. So, um, in, <laughs> I, I wish I had. I wish I had different answers for you. But, but, but I don't. Anyway, that being said, I'm moving on. Uh, I, I got nothing else to add to, add to it. So, um, sorry to put that out there on on a live show like this. But you asked me to. So, so there it is. Um, Anyway, those of you unfamiliar with Grim Leftovers, <laughs> this is a show I do on Mondays uh, that tries to, you know, uh, get some of the stories that I was not able to get to on the Freaker's Ball, which is when all the stories I, I bookmark or mark in my read it later type thing are, are, are were to be read. But we talk about all kinds of other things, so I don't get to them. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and kick it off right here right now uh, with the first story. And this story comes from September 12th, 2018. Uh, MIT climate scientist says ordinary people, whoever they are, realize that this is a phony issue. <laughs> What's he talking about? G global warming, of course. P people, regular, everyday, ordinary folk realize that global warming is nonsense, especially when they put anthropogenic in front of it. Uh, AGW, as, as it's termed, anthropogenic global warming is absolute nonsense. Um, and if it wasn't, they wouldn't have modified the data to make the data fit their model, rather than, r rather than taking the data and building a model off of that. Oh. <sighs> Anyway, so here it is. Dr. Richard Lindzen uh, says the time, the time history, the time history of such matters as droughts, floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, and temperature extremes is well recorded by official bodies like the NOAA, whom I don't trust at all. I, I, I have no trust for the NOAA. Anyway, and displayed no systematic increase. Indeed, some like hurricanes seem to be decreasing. These trends have been documented by R. Pilkey Jr., whoever that is, and even the IPCC, those that modified, manipulated, forced the data to make it match their, what they wanted it to say. They have acknowledged the absence of significant associations with warming. The attempt to associate present weather extremes and other matters ranging from obesity to the Syrian civil war with climate change is uh, frequently hilarious. Yes, you can pretty much blame climate change on anything bad that happens. Well, maybe you can't, but they do. <laughs> uh, sea levels. Carefully analyzed tide gauge data shows sea level increasing about 20 centimeters per century for at least two centuries, with no sign of acceleration to the present. Got that? Tide gauge data shows sea level increasing about 20 centimeters per century for two centuries. No significant acceleration to the present. The claim that this increase is accelerating is very peculiar. The gauges don't actually measure sea level. Rather, they measure the difference between land level and sea level. At many stations, the former is much more important. In order to estimate the sea level, one has to restrict oneself to the tectonically stable sites. Since 1979, we have been able to measure sea level itself with satellites. However, the accuracy of such measurements depends, on, uh, depends critically on such factors as 
precise shape of the earth, which isn't always the same. <laughs> the earth uh, squeezes and uh, kind of like you think it's breathing. It, it changes uh, the ovalness of its shape every uh, periodically. Uh, anyway, assume that the satellite data is correct after that date and that the difference in the rates constitutes acceleration. Then they assume the acceleration will continue leading to large sea level rises by the end of this century. It's hard to imagine that such illogical arguments could be tolerated in other fields. According to the IPCC models, uh, find, finds that there is nothing competitive with man-made climate change, but observations contradict this. The warming from 1919 was almost warming, almost going on. It's a hoax. It's an absolute hoax. And it's designed for control. So they can control you. That is the purpose behold, behind the whole global warming scam. <laughs> so there's that. All right. About this one, but it, but it's still out there. Um, I, I was thinking it might, maybe it would kind of go away, uh, but it didn't. It's for you. Uh, be, because this guy, I guess he's still on the, uh, on the block to be nominated. His name is William Barr. And apparently Trump uh, nominated him to be the, the, the Attorney General of the United States. So this guy, William Barr, his connection to Ruby Ridge and defending FBI snipers. Yeah, the, Trump's AG pick was the top cop during the federal siege and the killing of Randy Weaver's wife and son. Um, so uh, uh, anyway... I, I don't really want to talk about the guy. I don't care about the guy other than the fact that if anybody's out there supporting Trump's decision to uh, put this guy in, just know what he is. And, and he is a, he's a horrible, horrible person. And uh, he, is, he is not the, he's, he's a, he's willing to just kill anybody for any reason. He is not the kind of guy uh, that should be in a position uh, like that. But then again, nobody is. There's nobody that should be in that position, ever. That position should not exist. But it does. <laughs> and so they're going to put somebody in there. And, and why this guy Trump picks the worst possible candidates for these things, who knows? But William Barr is a, is a, is a, is a despicable human being. And, and um, yeah, you, you can read through that article. There will be a link in, in the uh, blog. For anybody that uh, misses the link in the chat or not in the chat listening, uh, but the, the blog will be up uh, maybe later tonight, maybe tomorrow, um, and it'll have all the links as well as the podcast in there. So uh, yeah, bear that in mind and uh, just try and understand that if you are a supporter of, of Trump, that he he picks some of the worst people, um, and whether he's do actually doing the picking or having them picked for him, I couldn't tell you, but I, I would imagine they're there's a lot of people doing the picking for him anyway so uh just say no to william barr <laughs> all right let me get a sip of water here <laughs> all right all right by the way that last article was on the americanconservative.com and the first article was on principia-scientific.org all right, and this new article I'm coming up with here is from Reason.com from February 5th of this year. Yeah, it's a newer one, but uh, I, I decided to include it anyway. So here you go. A hemp company sues after police mistake their product for weed. Idaho police seized the product and charged the driver with a felony. Yes, indeedy. Misinformation about hemp is a costly mistake as one hemp company uh, unfortunately discovered. As of last week, Big Sky Seattle, LLC, a hemp company based in Aurora, Colorado, is suing the Idaho State Police and Ada County after the two were at odds over whether or not the product they were transporting through Idaho was pot. Days prior, truck driver Dennis V. Palmarachuk, 
I guess, uh, 36 years old, was apprehended while transporting 6,701 pounds of industrial hemp due to the arrest and seizure of the product, which occurred at after Palomar checks stopped at the East Boise port of entry. The driver attempted to explain to the doubting ISP officers that the substance he carried was not pot, but rather hemp. In fact, a spokesperson told the Idaho statesman that the officer on the scene knows what marijuana smells like and that the odor was very easily detectable by him, even with the trailer doors closed. <laughs> Idiot. Idiot. <laughs> anyway, uh, the officer's na na nasal investigation, a field drug test that showed the presumptive positive for THC, and a positive identification from a drug-sniffing dog. I wonder what kind of dogs, drugs that dog's been sniffing. All overpowered Palomar checks insistence. This shipment was taken, was then taken for more than definitive testing. Uh, but not after Palomar check was arrested, charged with a felony, and released on a $100,000 bond. Palomar check and Big Sky Scientific LLC were correct. Their product is absolutely, perfectly, 100% legal. In fact, hemp was legalized nationwide following the passage of the most recent U.S. Farm Bill in December. But ISP officers made a common mistake and failed to properly distinguish uh, two similarly similar yet different products. In fact, it's immense misinformation like this and hemp's proximity to pot, uh, they're in the same family, uh, that led to national confusion over hemp for so long. Well, that's part of it. Anyway, as previously explained, hemp is pot's non-intoxicating cousin. Its components have many functions. They can be used as fibers for clothing and rope, seeds for edible products, a naturally occurring cannabinoid, 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 CBD. <laughs> I have a tough problem with that word, uh, which is credited with reducing chronic pain and intense childhood epilepsy sy sy syndromes. Hemp is also ingrained in the American history that George Washington, founding father and first president, grew the crop on his land. And they don't even get into all the many, many other uses of, of hemp in here. Uh, like it could be easily replace uh, oil coming out of the ground. Absolutely. A as a fuel. Uh, there's so many, so many tons of uses for hemp. It's, it's just wonderful stuff. Activists like John Adamuki of Virginia Industrial Hemp Coalition had hoped the farm bill would help to minimize confusion during run-ins with law enforcement. Amatakuki, whatever his name is, previously told Reason, what the eight, eight, 2018 uh, farm bill will do is legitimize the industry to states, banks, insurance companies, Wall Street and investors. It will help to clarify any legal gray areas that federal and state agencies have towards hemp in their end cons consumer products. So while the ISP on the scene uh, may have relied on their nose to make an arrest, the difference between hemp and pot are significant enough that they should have done more to confirm the legitimacy of their charge. Here's the thing, though. Cops are stupid. They're, 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 they, they have to be stupid. They have to hire people with low IQ to be your regular street cop, to be your regular patrol cop. Uh, because if they realized what they were doing, what they were arresting and charging people for, ticketing people for, uh, all, all the bad things they're doing, then, then they wouldn't do it. They would, they would quit. They would get out of that job, but they hire they hire people that have I think it's a either an eighty or a seventy IQ or lower to to be the regular normal everyday uniformed police. And uh, sorry to say it, uh, cops out there, if you don't want to hear this, but uh, that is the case, and and it's been proven in court that not only is that the one of the requirements uh, for that, but they I think they took it all the way to the Supreme Court. I, I'm Fairly positive on that matter. I don't have the numbers in front of me or the uh, documents in front of me to prove that, but uh, I'm pretty sure that's the case. <laughs> oh, and then we'll, <laughs> the reason I wanted to put that one in there, 
uh, the, even though it's a newer article. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Java Doctor in the chat saying these cops need to go to hemp school. By the way, let me say hi to the folks here in the chat. Um, uh, people like Cowboy Tech and Moose Girl, Miss Kate, uh, Mr. Don Carroll, D.C., Asmo, Chalcedoni, El Echelon, Graham Z., uh, Don C. Oh, there's another Don C. Oh, two, two Don C's. Okay. Meister Brow, a.k.a. Woody. Miss Rain. Uh, Rob works in Rome's and uh, Phantom 2. Beetle on his new chat client. Yeah, he's styling. We, we got we got Dakota and Frumpy and Gromit. Uh, and Mr. Java Doctor, who I just mentioned there. Uh, JJ is from Scotland and Kozu and Moe and Ensem Dubois in the Poxified Trio. Yes, indeed. The... Uh, uh, they, they should be a singing group, I think. The Poxified Trio. Anyway, we got uh, Pone Sauce and Sock Puppet and uh, Skittle and Tech Man. And we also have a few bots in there I didn't mention, but uh, bots don't care if I mention their name. <laughs> exactly right, uh, Rob Works, because smart people will not be paid thugs. They will not do it. Well, I, they, some of them will. I mean, some of them are evil, but... Uh, uh, your your average everyday smart person is not going to be a paid thug. Um, all right, so we go to normal uh, blog normal dot org from September twenty fourth of two thousand eighteen. The FBI says marijuana arrests spike for the second straight year, far outpacing all arrests for any violent crimes. Now this happens. This happens to occur. During a time in the United States of America when more and more states are legalizing weed, pot, in, uh, pot arrests are spiking, outpacing arrests for all violent crimes at a time in your United States of America when it's becoming legal in more and more places. How is this happening? The total number of arrests Persons arrested in the United States for violating marijuana laws, not laws, codes, rose for the second consecutive year, according to the data released uh, September 24th by the FBI. According to the FBI's Uniform Crime Report, police uh, made 6, 659,700 arrests for marijuana-related violations last year. The total is more than 21% higher than the total number of persons arrested for the commission of violent crimes in 2017. They have a chart here you may be interested in from 1965 through 2017. By the way, in 1965, that number was sitting at zero. Zero. 1965. Of those arrested for marijuana crimes, just under 91%, 599,000, were arrested for simple marijuana possession offenses, a slight increase over last year's totals. Total marijuana arrests in 2017 increased for the second straight year after having fallen for nearly a decade. The uptick comes at a time... Oh, when Trump goes into office. Huh. Hmm. Uh, uh, no, I'm sure that's got nothing to do with it, right? Uh, when 10 states, including California, have legalized the adult use of cannabis, leading to significant decline in marijuana-related re arrests in those jurisdictions. Actions by law enforcement run counter to both public support and basic morality. Normal uh, political director Justin Screckle, Screckle? Streckle. In a day and age when where 20% of the population lives in states which have legalized and nearly every state has some legal protections for medical cannabis or its extract, the, the time for lawmakers to end this senseless and cruel prohibition that ruins lives. As in previous years, marijuana possession arrests were at least likely to occur in the western region of the U.S., where possessing the plant has largely been either legalized or decriminalized. By contrast, in the Midwestern states, marijuana-related uh, arrests compromised, or comprised, not compromised, comprised over 53% of all drug arrests. So what's going on out there in the Midwest? I, I, I don't know. I, I, I know Moosey, uh, Moose Girl, 
she uh, she talks about it uh, on on a regular occasion, how her state uh, Wisconsin is 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 really really horrible on marijuana out there. So uh, yeah, I don't know what to say on that, but uh, it, it's 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 craziness, it's nonsense. Um, so. Uh, in the chat now we'll put that up in the in the in the thing here and if we have time we'll get to it uh, <laughs> too, too much often all right this article from january 24th 2019 from what's up with that uh, dot com what as in w-a-t-t not w-h-a-t what's up with that dot com so the heck is calling me during my show an anonymous caller. All right, I, I, I don't know who that is. I don't take anonymous calls. All right. Um, anyway, so on this article here, Microsoft now decides if climate change news or other content is reliable. Stop ringing, phone. All right. Uh, yes, Microsoft now decides if climate change news or other content is reliable. Oh, boy. This is a guest essay on the What's Up With That uh, site uh, by Eric Worrell. Microsoft have released a plug-in for their Edge browser, which uses NewsGuard ratings to mark uh, BuzzFeed as reliable. And, uh, hang on a second. Let me, let, me, let me just answer this here. Hello? It is, but uh, but I don't. This is not my. This is my regular phone. I don't have this. I don't have the soft phone turned on, so I, I can't really cover you on the show. Oh, okay. Well then. Goodbye. But but if you have a comment, go ahead and make your comment, and I'll talk about it. No, I'd rather do it myself. Okay. Or if you have wire, um, connect hook up on the wire. I'll get you that way. Yeah, wire.com. Uh, I'm at Grimner on wire.com. Okay, I'll think about it. All right. All right, you can't put past your phone in. Uh, not, at the, not, at the, not at this moment. Okay, understood. All right, bye. bye. All right, well, Christine had a comment of some sort. I don't, I don't know what the comment was, but uh, anyway, I don't have my, I don't have my soft phone turned on. <laughs> Anyway, back to my article here. And let me just start this paragraph again. Microsoft has released a plugin for their Edge browser, which uses NewsGuard ratings to mark BuzzFeed as reliable and Breitbart, Drudge, and WikiLeaks as untrustworthy. At the time of this writing, they haven't yet made up their mind about what's up with that. Yeah, it was Christine. Oh. <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, from the, the Microsoft team establishes NewsGuard. This is, uh, from uh, January 23rd here without consulting with its users. Microsoft has installed an establishment media browser extension purportedly purportedly. I have a tough time with that word too. designed to write the accuracy of news websites as a default extension on mobile versions of its edge browser. In practice, it creates a news blacklist uh, by warning users away from sites, including Breitbart News, The Drudge Report, and The Daily Mail. Really? Against The Daily Mail? I thought they were pretty left-wing. Anyway, uh, the, the browser extension called NewsGuard presents users with a red warning label if they navigate to a website that it judges to be unreliable. A green rating is given to websites NewsGuard considers trustworthy. Uh, a number of pro-Trump websites, including Breitbart News, are given a red rating by the by the extension. Ooh, red, bad, stop, turn back, go the other way. <laughs> All right. Um, to install this new feature, you need you just need to install Edge on your iPhone or Android device, or perhaps use the Edge browser on a Microsoft computer. Not Microsoft computers, Microsoft operating system on whatever computer. Uh, for fun, uh, he pulled some screenshots 
of the ratings of the BuzzFeed, Breitbart, and, and uh, what what's up with that? It's here, yeah, BuzzFeed, Solid Green. Oh, these these are very accurate and accountable s- stories on 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 BuzzFeed, which we all know they are not, and they uh, themselves have admitted that. <laughs> and then on Breitbart it says, "Proceed with caution. This website generally fails to maintain." Basic accuracy, uh, standards of accuracy and accountability. And then uh, uh, with NewsGuard, I mean, with uh, what's up with that? They said, uh, this site saying, yeah, we haven't we haven't rated it yet. Uh, pay no attention for them. And, and I'm sure it would say the same thing for, for Real Liberty Media. They haven't rated us yet. Uh, we're not, you know, we're not worth their time. <laughs> we're under the radar. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, uh, the reliable rating for BuzzFeed, in this guy's opinion, and my opinion as well, he says seems a little questionable. I say I say seems totally wrong, uh, given their recent fake news embarrassments. Uh, but the real question in his mind, if Microsoft tells you web content is reliable, are they liable if you act on content and then suffer harm or loss? <sighs> we all know. Microsoft is up to evil things, just like Google is, absolutely, and and Twitter's certainly going that direction, um, but but absolutely Microsoft, Apple, Google, th- those are the three top evil companies uh, in the computer world out there right now, and and if you're gonna trust them uh, to tell you what's real news and what's not, you, you just get off the computer. I, I mean, at that point, you're done. You're finished. You're toast. Move along. <laughs> because they are not to be trusted in any way. I, I mean, trusting Microsoft, that's probably just as bad, if not worse, than trusting Snopes. And Snopes is total crap. Nonsense. And everybody says, oh, I'm going to go check me Snopes and see if they're going to tell me this is real. Oh, my God. <laughs> Got to be joking. But there it is for you. <laughs> All right. Well, another newer article here I have from Mises, uh, Mises.org, Mises Institute. Uh, uh, and and I, I bring this up because, well, just the, just the headline of the article made me laugh. Laugh. Yes, indeed. The headline is, Will policymakers turn a global economic slowdown into a crisis? Duh! <laughs> Without a doubt, that is what they do. They are very good at turning a little thing into a monster problem. Yeah, they they are really that they are experts at screwing stuff up, and I, and I don't think it's by accident. I do believe it's by design, as uh, Rahm Emanuel said, "Never let a good crisis go to waste." <laughs> And that was, that was not for your benefit by any stretch of the imagination. Anyway, from the article here, written by Danielle, or Daniel, Daniel, I guess, Lacall. The recent macroeconomic data of leading economies point to a widespread slowdown. What is more concerning is not just a logical moderation in the path of growth, but the acceleration in the weakening of economies that were, that were supposed to be stronger and healthier. It's even more concerning that this aggressive worsening of key leading indicators in China, the EU, and most emerging economies happens at the peak of the largest monetary and fiscal stimulus in decades. They're already doing everything they can to prop these fake economies up, and it ain't working. (laughs) It's easy to blame this widespread weakening on political headlines, trade wars, and, of course, Donald J. Trump, but it would be disingenuous to believe those are the real factors behind the neg- negative economic uh, surprise. Surprise? It's not, it's, re- it's really, it's really, there's really no surprise to it. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't know why anybody would be surprised by any of this, just looking at the, the way countries spend money hand over fist borrowing on top of debt, and more and more and more to, to, to like there's a bottomless 
a well of, of cash just going to flow out and that cash is going to maintain its value. It's nonsense. It's not true. But that's what they want you to believe. They don't want you to look at what this, what they're calling 21 trillion debt, which is way, way larger uh, than that in actuality. It, well, probably close to a quadrillion, uh, but, but they don't want you to look at any of that. We'll just go with their numbers, the 21 trillion debt, and make you think that somehow they can fix all this by spending more. <laughs> by borrowing more. They think that you're going to believe that, well, if we could just, just create more money. But, 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 but the problem, there's a, there's, there's a problem. When you increase the money supply, when you create more money, that dollar, that single dollar that you're holding in your hand becomes now. Fable goes, and you're like, why are the prices everything keep going up? Well, it's because of the way they do things. It's, it's really not that difficult, the basics of it. Uh, you know, some of the finer details get into some, some pretty strange stuff. But uh, uh, overall, you know, it, it's like if you want, you want a, a glass of Kool-Aid, maybe, say. And so you got to get a pitcher of Kool-Aid there, but you want to have four cups of Kool-Aid for everybody. But there's only enough in there for one cup. So you pour three cups of water in there and stir it up. Well, it's, it's really not Kool-Aid anymore, is it? It's just lightly colored, lightly sugared water. That tastes like crap. It's worth, and, and, and nobody wants it. <laughs> that's that's kind of what happens when they create more money. Your your money became becomes tasteless, worthless, useless. Uh, anyway, the pace of global recovery since 1975 has been slower and weaker. Well, you know why that is. Back in 1972, it might have been 71. No, I'm sure it was 72. Uh, the dollar was decoupled from any kind of backing, gold backing, silver backing. That was gone. It was, it was erased. It was wiped out. And so they could create dollars as much as they wanted because they didn't say, hey, we have the, the, the funds to pay you back in gold or silver. All because all you have to believe is in faith in America. Well, that credit is a way at this point. <laughs> Oh, but who's it overdone to? Well, then you want to, I'm not even going to get into the Rothschilds right now. <laughs> anyway, so consistently, according to the OECD, this is this, uh, re these recoveries are slower and weaker. They're taking longer. They happen slower. At the same time, periods of crisis are less aggressive, uh, albeit more frequent than prior to 75. Another interesting evidence of these crises and recoveries since 1975 is that almost all economies end the recession period with more debt than they had before. Rob Works corrects me, it's 1971. Thank you. Um, these factors are all concerning, but the evidence also shows the economic progress has continued regardless. Progress. Progress. <laughs> the debt uh, keeps piling up, I think is what that should say. But economic pro progress has continued regardless, and that the main factors of well-being have improved dramatically. Uh, the guy that wrote this had the opportunity of uh, meeting Jonah Norberg, author of Progress, and uh, we discussed, they discussed, all the positive elements they have seen in the past decades. In the same period, from 1975 to 2018, extreme poverty has been reduced to an all-time low. <sighs> Really? I don't know if I believe that or not. Uh, uh, maybe in certain places, but uh, up here, I don't need to go into and I don't really have time for. Uh, but just understand that, uh, yeah, if, if they have their way, and of course they will have their way, uh, they will, these policymakers will indeed turn a global economic slowdown into a massive crisis. Because <laughs> that's what they do. <laughs> All right. <laughs> ah. This article. I, I, I and it's an old article. It's a very very old article. But I came across it and and I, and I wanted to share it with you because um many people don't believe this is actually happening or going on. 
but it is. It's real. This article from January 28th, 2013 on Forbes.com. Israel forcibly injected African immigrants with birth control. That's right. Forcibly injected African immigrants with birth control. That weekend, back then, 9, 2013, a, a report revealing that African women immigrating to Israel were subjected to mandatory contraceptive injections, effectively amounting to forced, if temporary, sterilization. Uh, that report made global headlines. Nobody paid attention. Some of the 130,000 Ethiopians, most of them Jewish, live in Israel. The community experiences higher poverty and unemployment rates than the rest of the country's Jewish population. In the past decade, or past decade from 2013, um, the birth rate among Ethiopian, Isra Ethiopian Israelis has declined by at least 20%. Advocacy groups now claim that this decline is the result of birth control regime forced upon Ethiopian immigrant women. According to an article in Haaretz, an Israeli news source, one Ethiopian, Ethiopian immigrant said the doctors who injected her claimed that people who frequently uh, give birth suffer. What? The doctor who injected her told her people who frequently give birth suffer. Uh. While it is possible, if highly unlikely, that doctors genuinely had the women's health in mind when forcibly injected uh, them with contraceptives, there is no excuse for depriving women sovereignty over their own reproductive choices. Israel has acknowledged the issue without wrongdoing, without admitting any wrongdoing, and has vowed institutional changes in health care for immigrants. By decree of Israel's health minister, minister, gynecologists have ordered not to renew prescriptions of Depo Provera for women of Ethiopian origin, or if for any reason there is concern that they might not understand the ramifications of the treatment. Still, still, intense scrutiny should be applied to women's groups and international organizations to make sure these changes, uh, not to, but by women's groups, uh, to make sure that these changes are implemented in full. Moreover, more attention must be paid to the plight of vulnerable African immigrants around the world. Uh, just everybody. I, I, I mean, you people go to a doctor expecting to be able to trust that person. And, and when this is what they do, um, you might want to think twice about trusting anybody in the medical industrial complex. Anybody. Whether that be a doctor or a dentist or a pharmacist or a whatever, podiatrist, eye doctor. <laughs> Don't trust any of them. They're, they're all liars. They're all trying to scam you. And, and they're probably not all trying to sterilize you, but you know, I don't, I don't think the dentist is trying to sterilize you. Of course, I don't know. They do use fluoride. So there's that. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Oh, man, I tell you. All right, this is a little more fun than that <laughs> previous thing. From Disclose.tv. Aliens? Warp propulsion? Invisibility? The Pentagon, the Pentagon actually explores these things. Yeah. That's right. Uh, when was this article posted, by the way? Uh, January 21st. So also a, a more recent article. All right. A light has been shed into a secret government program. Its focus is on scenarios that go far beyond the threat posed to Earth by aliens. <laughs> who, says, who says aliens are a threat? Maybe they're just coming down here to, to give us the, the secrets to the universe. Anyway. The U.S. Department of Defense has revealed information that could have come from a sci-fi blockbuster. Under the name Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, the U.S. government appears to be researching UFOs, aliens, and other 
fictional scenarios <laughs> more familiar from movies so they're they're saying here on disclose.tv that aliens and ufos are fictional what do they know they know nothing secret ufo program on very whoa somebody's talking to me down here oh never mind uh <laughs> <laughs> Where was I? Secret UFO program on very bizarre research topics. A list of studies and research carried out uh, within the framework of the program, and, and this is spelled with an E on the end, two M's and an E program. So I, I'm assuming a, a, a British fellow must have wrote this. Anyway, a framework of the program has been published with topics ranging from strange to absolutely bizarre. Those include things like invisibility through concealment, wormholes, and extra-dimensional manipulation. The publication of data was not entirely voluntary. Uh, Stephen Aftergood, the head of the Government Secrecy Project, yes, they have that, the Government Secrecy Project, of the Association of American Scientists, has made a corresponding request which had to, to be which had to be complied with according to the Freedom of Information Act, FOIA. The list of research papers tells us more about this program than previous coverage. Although after good, uh, we although explained after good, uh, we now have a better idea of what exactly the Department of Defense is planning and producing. <laughs> They got a picture of a Stargate here from uh, Stargate SG-1. <laughs> I would love to travel through a Stargate to some distant planet. Just to check it out. You know, see how it is going through a wormhole. That'd be fun. <laughs> anyway, according to Aftergood, the term abnormal space threats, which the Pentagon is investigating, is supposed to hide nothing but UFOs. But the U.S. government has been conducting such an investigation behind everyone's back for years. Other interesting topics are the following. Advanced nuclear propulsion for manned space missions, pulsed high-power microwave technology, microwave technology, space access, crossable wormholes, stargates, and negative energy. They're actually investigating stargates. <laughs> the latter study was in, it was indeed designed to identify extraterrestrial life, according to Motherboard, another website. Uh, uh, author Dr. Eric Davis has intensively studied the composition of space-time. Among them was the question of whether a spaceship zoomed through a wormhole, wormhole landed in a place where there were aliens, or... Uh, with with our or a higher level of knowledge. Huh. It does make you wonder. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> there's more to the article that, that you could read through. Uh, and, and let me just give you this sentence here. Conspiracy theorists have known since the alleged crash of the UFO in Roswell in 1947, that the United States government has a great interest in aliens and their secrecy. Well, the aliens don't so much have secrecy as the U.S. government has secrecy. And they're not after the alien secrecy. They're after the aliens' technology so they can use it to better kill people. Because that's what the government does. They kill people. And they're very good at it. Oh, boy, do they... Or are they good at it? <laughs> all right, all right. Let me, let me see here. Just quickly uh, cover this uh, article that uh, Rob Works put in here. From governmentslaves.news. Real news, not fake news. Governmentslaves.news. Meteor, in quotes, meteor, hits Venezuela during political turmoil. But I've never seen a meteorite make a U-turn before. This was article was posted today. Oh, it's just a little video. I I, I can't really share it with you. I'll I'll go ahead and put the uh, I'll go ahead and put the, the the link into the post show blog for you. But uh, Rob Works already posted it in the chat. So if you checked it out, 
uh, cool. And if not, go ahead, feel free to check it out now. Yeah. So, uh, awesome. Um, all right. All that being said, did I say much? I don't know. Anyway, uh, you, um, <laughs> I've had a good time doing, doing the uh, Grim Leftovers here another week for you. Like I said, I think this is episode eight of, of this program. It might be nine. I don't know. I think it's eight. Uh, anyway, I'll be back again next Friday with another... Um, Friday? No. Jesus. Next Monday with another episode of Grim Leftovers. And uh, tomorrow you will have uh, Flash, somebody, uh, with his show in a perfect world at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And then on uh, Wednesday you get Grammy well, with her program, Grammy's Rocket Chair at 7 p.m. Eastern. And also on Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, once again, she does it Monday and I mean Wednesday and Friday. I'm not, I'm not doing too good with with uh, day names here. Uh, and then on Thursday you have at 7 p.m. Uh, 6 p.m. Eastern, uh, Flash somebody once again uh, with his program 20 percent off. Um, Friday night, like I said, is Grammy, and then followed up following her up at uh, 11 p.m. Eastern is myself and the Moose Girl with the Freakers Ball. And then uh, we have some weekend shows. we got the Dork Table on Saturday. I play the Blues on Sunday. Hal Anthony comes on on Sunday. Check the schedule there on reallibertybd.com. Thank you all for tuning in. It's been a pleasure. And you all have yourselves a great week. Talk to you later. Peace.